Welcome back to the Digital Desk. I'm Anna Johnson. I've got Chad Pine with me here today to talk about sports here in the region and seasons are winding down. Soccer is one of those, right Chad? Soccer is going to end this weekend. The Final Four taking place in Fenton, which is just outside the St. Louis area. We have three teams that are advancing to the uh, Final Four. Danielle King will have reports tonight at 6, 9, and 10 for us on those three teams. In Class 1, we have Lakeway. They've made it. They're just 12 and 11 on the year, but they've really come on here late, being able to win the district and move on here from wow. uh, the districts into the quarterfinals now. So they're going to have a game at noon. They're taking on Duchenne out of the St. Louis area. In Class 3, jumping up a couple levels, Springfield Catholic continues its amazing season. And year after year, the Irish keep building mm -hmm. on these impressive programs. So they are once again back in the state uh, Final Four. They will have Ledoux another school out of St. Louis. That'll be a tough matchup. That one's going to come at 1.30, and then later tonight at 5 o'clock, Rogersville. We've talked about the Wildcats mm -hmm. before. Undefeated this season, 25-0. and 0. They've got the scoring. They've got the goalkeeping. They are a complete team. The coach loves watching them just out the field, creating these goals. And that team does feature this week's Athlete of the Week. Here is Danielle King with uh, exactly what makes the Wildcats so special. The Springfield Catholic soccer team is making a trip to the Final Four with the help from senior and co-captain Kaiden Huttenlocker. He's a special, special player, and you know we've seen it in these last few weeks especially. He's just stepped up to a different level. Kaiden has been waiting for this moment for more reasons than one. Last three years have been tough. Glendale has put us down every single time, and my brothers and sisters both went to state. I thought I was going to be the only one not to make it, but made it with a great team and we're going to see how far we can go. His brother Kaway and sister Kalia once wore the green and white all the way to state. And Kalia has shared her thoughts on the competition ahead. She said it's you it's a different level for sure and just got to be ready, stay prepared. The teams up there are going to be tough, so got to bring our best game. When asked who is the best soccer player in the family? Me of course. Uh, as the youngest I got to learn from them, so I'm just better now. All jokes aside, Kaiden might be the baby of the family, but for this Catholic team, he is the one doing the guiding. He's been such a good leader, and you know, even with the younger kids, he's just been such an inspiration for all of them. An inspiration that might be enough motivation to go all the way. With our Athlete of the Week, I'm Danielle King. So cool to see a family that has a legacy yeah. of athleticism. Very good for them, uh, but that's not the only sport going on. We've got football, no. and that's in the semifinals? Uh, quarterfinals, quarterfinals tonight. So, yeah, it's going to be a nice evening, too, for a lot of these games. Some of them have already been scheduled for Saturday. Misha does that for travel because mm -hmm. now that we're getting into the state quarterfinals, you're seeing teams from the Ozarks taking on teams out of the Kansas City area or St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So the schools want to make sure that the fans, some of which are teenagers driving right. to see these games as fans, want to make sure they get there and back, especially with deer out on the road so much. So they move that to a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. for a lot of these teams. But there are a handful of games tonight. We have seven schools in our area still alive for state titles. Wow. Six in Missouri, one in Arkansas. Of the six in Missouri, four are undefeated. That's incredible. Starts with Class 6, Nixa. They're taking their undefeated season up to Rockhurst tonight. That's mm -hmm. a 7 o'clock game. Rockhurst only has one loss on the season. Wow. So this will be interesting to see what happens here. For Nixa, it was the first district title they'd won in so many years. They are strong on both sides of the ball, so we'll see if that trip up to Kansas City can get the win against this Rockhurst team who actually upset the top seed in the district last week with Lee Summit North. So we'll see exactly what happens with that away game. A lot of people are heading to that game. I hear the sidelines aren't that big for the <laughs> guest side. Uh, maybe it hasn't been upgraded since the 90s. So best of luck finding a seat for this big matchup in Class 6. Another game that's happening tonight is in Class 3. This features a pair of undefeated teams. You have Ava, the Ava Bears, perfect on the year, welcoming in the Seneca Indians. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be a very interesting matchup. Anytime you got a game in Ava. I love the SCA, yeah. the South Central Association <laughs> Conference. It's just smash mouth football. These are mid to small size schools. Mm -hmm. The community comes out, they support some games. Aww. It doesn't matter if it's Thayer, if it's Mountain View, Birch Tree, Liberty, or Ava. They all show up. It's a great atmosphere, and it'll be a great one tonight with two undefeated teams going against each other at 7 o'clock. And the other game tonight, Class 1, Merriamville, they will be hosting uh, Portageville, and they are also the Comets undefeated this year and that's a team year after year that you see also turning in these amazing seasons they always just smash mouth football when you think of the comments smash mouth football the run game 
pound it down your throat. So we'll see if they can keep <laughs> their undefeated season alive. Then tomorrow is going to be the other games that we have in our area. Class 5, Republic has had a great year yeah. in the COC. They've upset some teams. At the beginning of the year, we're like, okay, that was maybe a fluke. Okay, that looks like a good team. Mm -hmm. Well, they're in the state quarterfinals for Class 5, which is no small feat. So they have their game uh, tonight at home welcoming in Helias, a Catholic out of the Jeff City, Columbia area. So they're coming in uh, it's actually tomorrow at, I believe it's 1 o'clock. Undefeated Fair Grove will travel up to Tolton Catholic. That's a 2 o'clock game tomorrow. And also uh, tomorrow, eight-man action, Lockwood and Archie. Eight-man football, if you've never seen it, is a lot of fun. Because just take an 11-man game and, yeah. and take out maybe some, and I'm not trying to, you know, say this in a bad way, but take off three maybe the unathletic players mm -hmm. from the field, and then you've got eight kids, and they're just going straight Hard down charging. the field. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great game to watch. So best of luck to Lockwood as they will have Archie coming into town. And then the lone team in Arkansas that we talked about, Mountain Home, the Bombers, the last team standing. They're in Class 6A. They get undefeated Greenwood tonight. Mm -hmm. and they're on the road, so we'll see if Mountain Home can continue to be the last team standing for our area. But a lot of great games, and of course the Ozone will yeah. have highlights uh, all weekend long, and of course it'll be on their website as well. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, speaking of the Ozone, they're getting ready for the next season already. Mm -hmm. Online, just this morning, they posted this, that the basketball classifications and district assignments have been released. So. Those practices are already underway, and you can go through here and see exactly where the teams will be stacking up. I mean, look at this. Class 6, District 5. This is going to be a fun one to watch. Central, Glendale, Joplin, Kickapoo, Neosho, Nixa, Ozark, Republic. Strong teams. No love lost between any of these teams right here. Uh, the boys are on the left side of the screen, and the girls' conferences are on the right. And you can scroll down, and you can check out all of these to see maybe where your school will fall and looking ahead to who might have the home uh, kind of field advantage when they get into the uh, postseason. But that's just what's fun. I mean, you think about how successful football is in this area, but really basketball is where the best, I think, tradition is uh -huh. for the Ozarks. The long story, of course, of the blue and gold tournament that Greenwood hosts every year on the campus of Missouri State. The pink and white, uh, not far behind that, who's been around for many, many years, hosted at Drury. Those midseason classics are unbelievable. Tournament of champions coming in. But you think about the great teams from over the years that the Ozarks has produced, whether it's been you know at Kickapoo or Glendale, Marshfield, it doesn't matter. These teams are all great, and uh, basketball, it's always fun in the Ozarks. And here we are, basketball season is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And that's about the time you're going to want to start staying indoors. Yeah, and that's it's perfect. <laughs> the way they worked it out is right. perfect. And then you head back outdoor for you know softball and uh, baseball and girls soccer in the spring. It's 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 really like somebody planned it that way, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think know. so many of us, too, have really great memories from when we were in school, yeah. and we get to go to the games and the smell of popcorn and the hot dogs. Yeah. At least that's what I remember. I was uh, talking to my friend Johnny McNeil the other day. We both went to Brentwood, and there was a game. Uh, Brentwood was playing Berkeley, and uh, the TV stations in the bigger cities, they never came out to any high school games. They were always covering the Cardinals, the football Cardinals, the Blues. High schools never got on, and if it was, it was the larger schools, like your CBCs, your Viani's, your St. Joe's Academy. Well, they came out to Little Brentwood hosting Berkeley because it was the Suburban East mm. title game. And uh, Kevin Cullum took the ball, had a fast break, went up for the dunk, and shattered the backboard. What a shot. And KSDK St. Louis was there to get that shot. Ooh. And it was crazy. Glass came down all over the court. I went out there along with a lot of other people and grabbed like a handful of it yeah. and, and kept it just because it was so cool. And then we all had to call our parents to come and get us early because yeah. the game had to be suspended because they didn't, you know, those were attached to the ceiling and they didn't have another backboard to, to put in. But, yeah, it's just great memories. And yeah. even when I was back uh, starting as a sports reporter in St. Joseph, Missouri, and I would drive an hour out into the country to these Union Star, Stewartsville, all these small towns on a winter night, the whole downtown area was dead. There was snow and ice. All the shops were closed. But you would go to the high school gym, mm -hmm. and there was cars and trucks all over the place. The place was hot. It was steamy. It was humid. <laughs> and people were loving it. So, yeah, great memories of basketball. Yeah, well, so much more to look forward to. And, of course, Chad's back here every Friday to give us an update on how things are going with sports in our region. So we'll continue to follow all of these in the standings, of course, for these uh, all these really exciting football games that are coming to a yes. close at the end of the season here.